Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for March 29th through April 4th. This week I read one book, I watched four TV shows, I watched four movies, I listened to one podcast, and I listened to two books. If you happen to watch my last reading vlog, you know that that one book that I finally finished this week was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This is their debut novel and it comes out in June, and I highly recommend everybody read it when it does because it was fantastic. Our main character is a trans boy named Yadriel, and because he's trans, his family doesn't really understand where to put him when it comes to the magic that they practice. If you're a Bruja, you have healing magic. If you're a Bruho, you help spirits on to the next world. Obviously, he is a Bruho because he is male, but his family doesn't really understand his transness, so they've just kind of ignored him for now. So he and his cousin have decided that he's going to go through his rites to become a Bruhex. Almost immediately after that, he meets a spirit that he wants to help pass on so he can prove that he has the type of magic he should have, but that spirit is not quite ready to go, so there's a little bit of an adventure aspect. This was absolutely fantastic. It was basically tied for my favorite read of last month, so if you haven't watched my wrap-up for March or my reading vlog specifically for the Queer Lit week, weekend, then I highly suggest you do that because they will be linked down below. And of course they're also part of my 34 and 34 series, which I am doing right now. This is actually a bonus video because it's Sunday, you get two videos on Sundays. One of the shows I watch, Friends is just always playing in the living room. Not absolutely always, but a lot of the time, so I will just sit down and watch a few episodes with my roommate and then get up to go do whatever the next thing I was going to do is, because it's just something that's easy to have on in the background. Obviously there are aspects that have not aged well, but it's amazing how much I remember from this show, and either I'm really good at understanding how the show is written and will get the lines that are coming up, or I actually remember them and I haven't seen them for over 20 years, so... Who knows? My quarantine roommate and I also watched another episode of Better Call Saul. I finally realized what this one major character's name is because it was set up, I believe, in the previous show Breaking Bad that he was kind of a side character. And for whatever reason, I just never knew what his name was. He was always just, oh yeah, it's that guy. Uh, and now I know his name is Nacho, so that's good. I also introduced Chad to the world according to Jeff Goldblum and I rewatched a few episodes and he watched a few episodes. This is just full of delight and wonder and just very amusing to watch. And then of course I stayed caught up on Survivor. We've hit the merge, one person has come back, it was so close to being the person I wanted it to be, it was just right there. And we do have the chance of another returning player later in the game. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but if it's anything like the last time they did this, it's going to be a little bit closer to the end. One of the movies I watched this week, the first one having a long title that I just need to read because I've tried to say it five times now and it's just not working. Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. This is a biopic about Ted Bundy and specifically about the woman that he was seeing when he was doing all of these murders and how she didn't know for sure whether or not he was a murderer. I didn't really know anything about this case going into it, so I don't know how true to life this was. It was entertaining. It was interesting to see it not from the serial killer's perspective. It was interesting to see basically the courtroom side of things as opposed to like the intrigue about this serial killer being out there. And I like that we got to see what toll it took on Liz, who is the woman he was living with while he was murdering other women. We also watched Jay and Silent Bob reboot because why the hell not? I didn't know this was going to be a thing, saw it was a thing and went, you know what? I love the heck out of Kevin Smith films, so might as well watch this. Essentially, Kevin Smith had a heart attack a little while ago and guilted all his friends into coming back for this movie, and this is something that he even says in the movie because not only does he play Silent Bob, he also plays Kevin Smith. This is one of those movies that gets heavily metatheatrical. It talks about reboots versus remakes. It has pretty much everybody that you could ask for from a previous Kevin Smith film back to reprise a role. And of course his kid is there and his kid makes fun of Kevin Smith for always putting Kevin Smith's daughter in Kevin Smith's things, so things like that are just really funny to me. At times the plot is very hard to follow, but even the movie mentions that that is just weird. But overall it's just entertaining for those that like Kevin Smith films. We also ended up watching a movie called Terminal. Going in, I didn't know anything about it. All Chad knew was it had Simon Pegg in it, and we like Simon Pegg, so we watched it. It's a psychological thriller, so I don't want to say too much about it, except for the fact that the only person with a speaking role who is female is Margot Robbie, who was great, admittedly, uh, but this is not the type of movie that's going to pass the Bechtel test. It was, however, very dark and creepy, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. And then as for the last movie, I wrote it down, but I really did not watch more than five minutes of it, and that was The Mummy. We had this pub crawl in our own house the other night, and that's just what Megan put on at the end of the night. And I started hiccuping, because if you've had nine beverages, that's just a thing that starts happening. And I decided it was bedtime, so technically I watched some of The Mummy. Do I remember literally anything? 
No, I do not. I also listened to two more episodes of Our Plague Year, which is a podcast that Joseph Fink is putting on about the current state of the world. What's interesting about these two episodes is the first one was more true to what has been happening on the podcast before, which is people have written essays and submitted them. In the second podcast, it was all people that had called in and left voicemails for the podcast. When I heard that was an option, I immediately called in and did the same. However, he gets hundreds of these voicemails, so it's very little chance that my voice will be on the podcast. But if that ever happens, I will be sure to let you know. On to the books I listened to this week, the first one being My Lady's Choosing. My friend Grey went live on Facebook and the caption was just, Grey is reading some bad romance. And I went, I'll click into this, see what Grey is up to today. And he holds up this book, My Lady's Choosing. I'm like, that's actually a book that is on my TBR because I know it's an interactive choose your own adventure romance book, which just sounds amazing. So what would happen is he would read the book and when we got to a choice, he would let the people watching along choose which way we're going to go. And because it was a bunch of queers in the chat, we all decided that we wanted to go the one way that you could possibly end up with another lady, which we finally did. We did this over two nights, so it took a little bit of time to get there, but it was highly entertaining. There were actually some points though where it was like, you don't actually have a choice here because if you did that, you would just die. So please turn to 165. And even in the chat of watching that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna count this because I was here for the whole adventure. I'm counting it, and I did. <laughs> Finally, the last book I listened to this week was a full cast recording of Charlotte's Web. It was narrated by Meryl Streep and then had a whole host of other people playing all the barnyard animals and Fern and her uncle and all of those people. It was fantastic. I wanted to reread this because I haven't read it since I was a kid and it is the central play that they are working on in George by Alex Gino. So since I've read that, I've been feeling like I should go back and reread the book and this was me doing that. This stood up surprisingly well for a book from the 50s. If you've never read it before, it is about this pig named Wilbur who is the runt of the litter and this little girl saves him from being slaughtered at birth. And we just follow him through his life meeting all of these other barnyard animals and most specifically this spider named Charlotte. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want me to know that you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon, like tomorrow. Bye.